Hustle fam, this is a scary moment for me because in this recording, I am using a new camera lens and I'm using new audio. Now, I have experimented with trying to get this as crystal clear, talking about the visuals and the audio as possible, but there's really nothing like just putting it out there and seeing what the feedback is. So, that being said, this is the visuals and the audio quality that I'm thinking about using from here on out, right? And the reason why the autofocus is a little iffy is because of the lighting, but I kind of want you all to see that sign says, be still and know that I am God, because you guys know I'm unapologetically a believer here, right? But all I have to do to get it right is to come here, and now we will be in focus the remainder of the video. That was like just a minute of housekeeping tips, because we family, and I just believe in having open dialogue with you all, but that's not the reason why you clicked on this video. But still, let me know, for real, what you think of the audio and the visuals. Should I keep it like this? Should I change it back to how it was? Should I try something else out? What we're going to talk about in today's video are things poor people do that rich people don't. I grew up in a low-income environment. You guys know my story, but for the benefit of the new people that don't. My mom never made more than $11 an hour. She told me that, and then later on forgot that she told me that. I am one of five living siblings. My mom has six kids, but only five of them are living. I'm like the middle kid, if you will. My grandmother, before she passed away many moons ago, got dementia. Then later, we call Alzheimer's, and if I pronounced it wrong, oh well. And I'm not a mathematician. I'm not super strong in math. But what I can tell you is that if you divide seven mouths to feed, right, me and my siblings, plus herself, plus her mother, plus all the household expenses by $11 an hour, I could quickly tell you that that equals broke. But coming out of that environment and a lot of the misbeliefs that was instilled with me kept me with a poverty mindset for many years. But eventually I broke out of that. And now by the grace of God today, I am a happy seven figure plus entrepreneur actually having conversations about what we can do to actually expand the business the brand even more so we could try to be a blessing to even more people that is not me bragging or boasting that is me telling you that if i can be raised by a single mother in the south in a very impoverished environment with no other support and still come out on top, so can you. The only difference, or one of the biggest differences that I think between me and you are, let's save that to the end of the video. Let's get straight into this reaction. This is another reaction that you guys share with me of Miss Odetta Rockhead Kerr. And if I mispronounce the name, I apologize. I got a Southern accent. Please blame it on my head and not my heart. And you guys know her. You guys love her because, like I said, you guys are always sending me videos to react to saying, hey, JT, we want your commentary on this or that. First of all, I'm humbled by it. I'm glad you guys even care what I got to think about stuff. Can continue to put them down in the description below. Or if you would like to, you could DM to me at JTLs on Instagram. Make sure it's the account that has over 100,000 followers because there's a lot of fake comments and fake accounts out there that are pretending to be me so that they can take advantage of you. And I don't want that to happen to you. Without further ado, let's get into today's reaction video. I was born poor. And my God, it's such a blessing as I've learned so much along the way. But what I have to tell you today, my YouTube family, is that being born poor was by chance. Dying poor is a choice. So that said, today I'm gonna say some things that you might find insulting, but instead of taking it personal, okay. what I want you to do is to take it as a lesson, as something you have just learned and use it on your journey to achieving financial freedom, which is Go. my objective for all of you here, my rock stars. Now, if you have very thin skin and you don't appreciate candor, then this video may not be for you. But if you are at that place where you're ready to make the choices and execute on the actions that's gonna revolutionize your life, Stay tuned. Welcome back to my channel, my YouTube family, my rock stars. 
Today we're gonna be talking about 10 things that poor people do that the rich don't. Mm -hmm. Now when I talk about poverty, it's not just about money because you it's can be poor with a rich mindset. But oftentimes we allow the construct that is poverty to consume us and we become negative, we become uncertain, we lack the courage that's necessary to move forward and to achieve our goals and we internalize what poverty represents which is really a social and economic condition now if you are guilty of any of these things don't feel bad because we have all been there what's important is that you take from it and make the necessary changes in order to be in alignment with you achieving this financial freedom that we're working towards on this channel the first thing that poor people do a lot that rich people don't is watch a lot of tv listen my youtube family if you know which celebrity just got divorced or you never miss an episode of your favorite series, you are watching too much TV. <laughs> what watching TV does is take away from your productive time. Time when you could be strategizing. 100% I agree with that. It also, it conditions you to think a certain way. I don't know if you've ever had this experience, but believe it or not, there are certain women that will watch so many like real housewives of this or of that and all of these celebrity drama shows and that becomes aspirational to them and now they expect to live a life like that and that's not to say that you can't get to a place financially speaking where you can enjoy a lot of time with your loved ones friends and whatever but the amount of work that it realistically takes to get to that level, right, you got to keep in mind that the people in these shows are being paid to be in those shows. So they might just can finance their lifestyle by getting paid by the show, plus whatever other ventures they may have or relationships they may have. All of that to say is that I agree with this point. You guys let me know if you agree or if you disagree. Also, let me know if you're doing any of these 10. Believe it or not, you only have to do one thing wrong to not make the amount of money that you deserve to make or the amount of money that, you know, God wants you to have. I had this conversation with a good friend of mine here recently, and I was like, man, believe it or not, what I've seen in my life over and over again and what I've observed in the lives of many other people along the way is that sometimes grace is not allowing you to have something until you're ready to keep it long term, right? Grace is sometimes God not allowing you to have something right now because he knows that you will lose it. He's waiting for you to become a man or woman that, hey, once I bless you with this, I want this to be something that is always with you, something that you could pass on to your loved ones, whatever that is, right? Or whatever that is. So it could be finances. It could be other things. But whatever that is for your life, sometimes grace is not giving you something that you'll squander, right? But waiting till you have the maturity to handle it. Just like for those of you out there like myself that is a parent, right? We know that for small children, you don't give a newborn baby a tomahawk steak, all right? Now, maybe when they're 25, 30 years old and you want to take them to a nice dinner, if they want to order a steak, cool. They can order a steak and you allow them to have it. But if you give them that, when they're a newborn, you gave them too much too soon, and that could be detrimental to their livelihood. Same thing is true with other areas of your life as well. So watching too much TV, I 100% will say that. I would even put listening to too much music as well. She might make that as a whole separate point, though. But when I'm riding in the car or when I'm just out and about, it's educational content or it's e-books. I know to some people that sounds morbid like man that sounds crazy boring i would hate my life but believe it or not you get used to it because i used to know all the lyrics to all the Lil wayne songs and the nelly songs and i'm kind of showing my age because some people be like bro don't nobody listen to them but at the time those were the people to listen to so whoever you like to consume right now musically if you know as soon as they drop a new song 
and you watch it over and over again and try to learn the dance and learn the words, the same issue is going to arise. You're wasting time. And believe it or not, the law of hypnotic rhythm, that is actually training your mind so that you will subconsciously for some, consciously for others, start behaving in a different manner because of that. All right, let's keep it going. Hold on, wait. Are you on social media because you're looking for a way to make more money in a consistent way so that you can better your personal economy or create or scale your generational wealth? Well, guess what? You're on the right channel. I want to invite you out to my Foundational Wealth Conference. There, I'm going to give you the proven strategy to make money in business, to make money in stock investing, and to make money in real estate investing. I'm bringing all of my friends together that make six and seven figures a year doing this, and I want to teach you how to do the same. Link is in the description down below if you want to take advantage of that. Coming up with ideas, doing a course, reading a book, listening to an audio book. Here's what the rich does. The time that you use to watch TV, they're either increasing their knowledge by taking courses or reading books. They're conceptualizing ideas and documenting them. They're managing their business or they're looking at ways to make money. They're spending time with mentors and coaches because poor people often surround themselves with other poor people. And I'm poor, well, I'm coming from a poor background, so trust me, I know. The rich, on the other hand, will surround themselves with people that they can learn from, people that can uplift them. That's a fact. Something else I'll share with you, too. When I first started doing this, it was hella uncomfortable. So for those of you out there that are saying, well, I don't want to do that. I don't know them people will be un uncomfortable. It'll be weird. I don't want them to look at me a certain way or whatever, whatever. Let's put it out there, right? Yes, it's going to be uncomfortable for you, maybe for them, but definitely for you if you've never been in that environment. It's going to be uncomfortable. Guess what? You do it anyway. All right. So just because something is difficult to do does not mean that you don't do it. If that was true, then none of us would have ever learned how to walk. None of us would have ever been potty trained. None of us would have ever learned how to dress ourselves, drive a car, manage your finances, you know, do all of the stuff that's like no duh common sense stuff to you now. There was a time when it was difficult for you. And what did you do? You did it anyway. Right. So in these environments, yes, sometimes you may be uncomfortable. All right. I told you guys my story. I used to ride around in a raggedy little piece of car, as my, my mama would call it, through the rich people neighborhood saying, you know what? If the same God in heaven that allowed them to wake up this morning, that's the common denominator. If he allowed them to get here one day, I can get here. I might not get here how they got here. They might have had relationship skill sets or something else that allowed them to get here. I might have to get here a different way. But the common denominator is God, right? Keep God first. We can all get to whatever our goals are, whether they're financial or otherwise. All right. Less than two years later, I now own a three story home that is right around that area. Right. Talking about I go through that exact area every day, but my property is right around that area. Right. And. My property now that God blessed me with less than two years later is paid off and it's larger than a lot of these properties. And at the time, I was like, I don't even know how I would qualify for a mortgage to stay out here, much less how I would be able to buy it cash. So, yes. Right. The moral of the story here is doing uncomfortable things will get you uh, different outcomes. Right. Being comfortable got you to whatever level you're at now. Right. If that's not where you're happy at and you're trying to better yourself, it's time to get outside of your comfort zone. People who have been where they are going, they're actually putting in the work while you are watching and waiting to see what's going to happen next in the series mm. that you have gotten so addicted to that, by the way, will not pay the bills. It's actually costing you money to stream that series. If you find that you can't get away from watching TV, watch programs that increase your knowledge. One of my favorite applications is Curiosity Stream. This is where you get documentaries that will bring value to your life. 
watch series like Billions, which is my favorite series. And in Billions, you learn how to invest, you know how to play the market and how to act as a, of course, shrewd businessman. But nevertheless, you're gonna learn things that you can actually apply to your daily lives. Your screen time and what you do with it will make the difference between you staying in poverty or achieving financial freedom. That's the second fair. thing that poor people do a lot that rich people don't is poor people wait for someone else to save them. You're looking for someone to be your hero instead of being your own. That is a 1000% fact. All right. I did a whole dedicated live stream talking about this subject matter. And in a nutshell, what we discussed was if you ever want to get to a high level financially speaking, you don't look for opportunities. You create opportunities. Right. So I agree wholeheartedly with that point, like one thousand percent. There are some things that are outside of your control, obviously. But yep. I'll tell you that ninety nine percent of what's causing you to be poor is within your control for the most part. But you get into the habit of blaming everyone except yourself for all your failures. For example, poor people will have a ton of children and wait for the government to come and feed their children. They will- I'm so glad she said it and not me. And I'm so glad that she's a woman of color that said it. And not me, because if a guy says something like that, man, you will be canceled. You will be unsubscribed. We don't, we don't like you no more, JT. So that's all I got to say about that. I'm just glad she said it, right? No amens or nothing. Y'all heard it. Waste their life, their working stage, that is, of their life. And at retirement, they expect the government to take care of them. When you get into the habit of waiting for people to save you, another spin-off from that behavior is that you never take responsibility. What you have to do is learn to be your own hero. Stop waiting for someone to come and save you. Rich people, they take ownership. Rich people don't complain or blame others. They become solutions oriented instead of identifying problems. They realize that their success is contingent on them and them alone, and they execute accordingly. Now, the third thing that poor people do a lot that rich people don't is poor people often sleep away their opportunities to succeed. Rich people are usually up early and they look at balancing that out, of course, with adequate rest. Now, poor people, on the other hand, you wake up when you have to. You will go out and go to the party and you know you have work the next morning, but you still don't get up in time to go to work. That's a poverty stricken mindset. You see, what you have to realize is that all of us have 24 hours in our day. If you choose to sleep out 12 of yours, as opposed to seven or so, which is required, how do you expect to achieve as much as the person who is being productive for 18 and sleeping for six? You need to make sure that most of your day is productive. Do not sleep away your ability to achieve financial freedom. The fact that poor people have no money saved or no emergency fund is another thing that poor people do that the rich don't. You don't have to save a lot and that emergency fund doesn't need to be big, but you need to put something aside consistently. It is recommended that you put aside 15%. You have often heard me say that even when I was earning minimum wage, I figured out a way to save 50%. And if I couldn't save 50% from what I was earning, I went and found new ways to earn so I wouldn't compromise my savings. Um, if you are not making enough today, don't make an excuse. That's definitely a fact. So the reality of, of increasing your financial situation, increasing your wealth, and what people expect it to be is two totally different things. What I mean by that is this, is that people will say, well, I'm already at this level. I'm not happy with this level. 
I want to go to the next level. So you expect to go from here all the way up to whatever level that you want to be at. What actually happens is you go from this level and you drop down. And how far you drop down depends on the person. And then you rebuild yourself back up to this level. Then you go to the next level. Why does it work like that, JT? I'm so glad that you asked, right? The way that you got to the level that you're at now is counterproductive to the way that you're about to start making money. The things that you believe to be true, the mindset that you possess, all of those things are counterproductive to being a successful business owner, right? I just got off the phone right before this live stream with somebody saying, hey, I'm super excited about bringing team members onto my team. We're going to do some hiring here on Tuesday, right? They said, okay, man, hey, I'm happy for you expanding your business. What hours are you giving them? I said, hey, listen, my workers set their own hours. I know that sounds crazy, right? People that work for me, right, with the exception of, you know, if I am have something that needs to get done in this way at this time, then yes, right? Those people, like a videographer, when I find one that I'm going to consistently use every single day and just bring them in-house instead of contracting them out like I'm doing now, yes, they're like that person will have a, a schedule. But other members of my team, it's all results-driven. I'll tell you, hey, I want this done by this time. If you work mornings or if you work days, or if you work nights, or mid-shift, or if you don't work weekends, or you work weekends, I don't even care. Now, if there becomes an issue with that, then you will be coached, and your times will be recommended, but I am not even an employer that cares what time you show up, and what time that you leave. I don't care if you do the job in eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours, or 100 hours, right? I have outcomes. If you do the job and get me this outcome, you get paid. If you can't get that outcome, you get coached. And then after a couple of warnings, you're out the door, right? How does that tie? I want you all to understand is that that's how success works, all right? Now, certain businesses... They have to have schedules for everybody. So I'm not saying that you should start a business and let your employees decide when they come to work and when they leave, right? It has to make sense for the nature of the business that you're in. Since my businesses are primarily digital, so I have a media company and I have a real estate investment company. The people on the real estate investment company side definitely have hours. I'm only talking about the people on the media company side. All right, this is what we need done. We need it done by this point. If you guys need me to set your hours, I can. But if you could just get this done, get it done, right? Great quality in a timely manner. Let's move on because we're busy, right? Super busy. Saving 50% of what you earn is a practice that I've been living by ever since I was like broke, broke. I'm talking about $400 or less per month broke, like that level of broke, broke. All right. And it was super hard to do. How do you survive off of two hundred dollars a month when you're only bringing in four hundred dollars a month? The answer is you don't. You go figure out how to make more money because it's easy. If we say hypothetically, you make a hundred grand a month and I tell you live off of fifty thousand a month, you'll say well, who in their right mind can't live off of fifty thousand dollars a month. Right. But if you tell somebody that makes four hundred dollars a month to live off of two hundred dollars a month, they'll say who in their right mind can live off of two hundred dollars a month. Right. So all of that to say is that you need to instill immediately the right habits to get you to the next level. The fallacy that unsuccessful people live by, not all, but many live by is the fact that I will behave in this manner once I get to this level. The reality of it, right, is that you don't get to that level until you behave in this manner. Right. It's kind of like hey, you until you beat this level, you don't go to another level. Right. I had a, another sidebar conversation. I'm going to say that for later on. But, oh, this got me in my bag. Right. This got me in my bag. Let's keep it going. Go and find new ways to earn. Watch the videos that I'm about to put out there about the 10 websites that you can make 100 US dollars per day on and learn how to make additional money so that you can create that emergency fund because if you lose your job as a poor person you typically suffer 
If you get a pay cut, you end up cutting back your expenses instead of finding new ways to earn. The rich, on the other hand, if they get a pay cut, they usually have at least six months pay put aside up to a year. And on top of that, they usually have an emergency fund and some sort of insurance. So they ensure. Yep. Before she go any deeper, right? Right now, I have, and you guys know I'm not even a big cash person. I believe that your money should be working for you. But if I need it to get liquid, so let's just talk about assets that we can liquidate immediately, right? And get that cash back. If I had to liquidate all of my assets and say how much savings I have, right, that I can touch immediately, probably like five years, right? I probably could go at least five years with no income and live my life the exact same way I'm living it now before I'll have to figure out how to do something else. Now, that is not something that I ever plan on exercising. I want to continue to grow businesses and invest in other resources. All right. Put that together, right? Because all of this ties together. How could the guy that was only making $400 a month and say, you know what, immediately, now I'm going to decide that I'm going to live off of half of what I bring in. And if half is not enough, I will go sacrifice whatever it takes, as long as it's legal, ethical, and moral. I will go do it to make more money until I am in a space where half of what I bring in is enough for me to comfortably live, right? Fast forward, now that same person has essentially five years worth of savings. And like I told you guys, we're actively investigating new plays. While I'm talking to you, I have people on my team that are working on ways to take 10 years off of my retirement age. So I'm 32 now. They're saying, hey, if we could figure this out, you could retire at 40 instead of 50, right? Because retirement is a cash flow number. It's not you have this much money in the bank, right? But once you have this much recurring cash flow coming in from your real estate and your other businesses that you invest in, right, you pretty much done. I mean, if you want to keep working, cool. And at that time, I'll decide. But all of this is hitting the nail directly on the head. That if they run into difficulties, if they get sick, for example, and can't work or can't operate their business, they're able to sustain and maintain their lifestyle under the existing situation. Another thing that poor people do a lot, that the rich or those on their path to achieving wealth do not do, is poor people subscribe to lifestyle inflation. And you have heard me talk about this a lot on the channel. Basically, when you subscribe to lifestyle inflation, is it inflation or inflation? Anyway, you get the gist. <laughs> when you subscribe to lifestyle inflation, whenever your income increases, you increase your expenditure. So for example, if you get a promotion at work and you start making 20% more in pay, you start changing your hairdresser, you look to upgrade your vehicle, you want to move into a more prominent community, that is bound to leave you poor. You cannot increase your expenditure along with your income. Whenever your income increases, it's an ideal opportunity for you to start saving or investing the difference. Instead of subscribing to lifestyle inflation, the rich actually save more than they spend. And whenever they get additional income, that goes into their savings or their investment. If the rich has a hairstylist when they're earning 100,000 US per year, when they start earning a million dollars per year, they will still go to that hairstylist. So instead of subscribing to lifestyle inflation, the rich will figure out ways to optimize their expenditure in order to invest more. On my path to achieving financial freedom, here's an example of how I did not subscribe to lifestyle inflation. When I just started to spend a lot of time in Kingston, I lived in a townhouse and paid about 3,000 US dollars per month in rent. Now, don't get me wrong, it was very nice and it was in a very nice community. I didn't know Kingston well enough to go out and explore, so I stayed where I was recommended to stay, 
as that community they said was a lot safer. But as soon as I got familiar with Kingston and got more comfortable, I wanted us to find a house and we started to look for a house. The great news is we were able to get a mortgage for 250,000 Jamaican dollars monthly. And at the time that 3,000 US dollars per month was the equivalent in Jamaican dollars of $255,000. So a mortgage of 250,000 versus a rent of 255,000, it's a no brainer, right? Mm -hmm. But the dollar was about one so I think it was 85 at the time. When the dollar got to one US dollars to 150 Jamaican dollars, that same $3,000 that I was paying in rent was now valued at $450,000. Remember, the mortgage doesn't change. So that upside was an excellent way to optimize income because now I was able to save significantly more from that rent of 3,000 because my mortgage, when you looked at it in the equivalent, was significantly less. That's what you do when you have a wealth mindset. Instead of figuring out ways to move your expenditure as you earn more money, you figure out ways to optimize and reduce your expenditure as you earn more or just in everyday circumstances. The rich continues to look for ways to save and invest more. The poor, it would appear, continues to look for ways to spend more. Now another behavior of- Has anybody ever been to Kingston? You guys know I got my passport. Y'all let me know if Kingston is a, a dope place for entrepreneurs. Only people that have went, right? Don't tell me what you heard in a movie or in a music video. If you actually been there, let me know. Of people who are poor, that's different from people who are rich, is that poor people use a lot of debt to pay for what they want. They borrow money to get married. They borrow money to go to a party. They borrow money to buy the flat screen TV to put in the bedroom, although they already have one that's working in the living room. They use credit cards, for example, to buy a new iPhone without the ability to pay it off. And unless that iPhone is gonna be used to generate money for you, like on a YouTube channel or otherwise, it's a debt that you should not incur. It's a bad debt. A big difference between the rich and the poor is how they use debt. So while the poor is using debt to acquire liabilities, the rich is using debt to acquire assets and to invest. Another behavior that poor people have that the rich don't is the poor often like to gossip and there's a lot of envy when they speak or when they see someone who is doing well. A lot of times when you hear people exchange in terms like haters or trollers, is it trollers or trolls on social media, when you check out who is hating and who is trolling, it's usually somebody who is not doing well financially. They talk about things like tea. Um, and listen, when they're talking about tea, it's not the mint tea and the green tea. They're talking about gossiping. They're also a lot more critical of people who achieve success, yet they themselves want to be successful. How can you be critical of what you want to become? You definitely will not attract it to yourself if that's the case. Another characteristic trait I realize of somebody who has a poor mindset, and remember, mindset, you can be poor and have a rich mindset. So that's why I keep phrasing it that way. But a lot of persons with poor mindset, they take pleasure in putting other people down. They get an ego boost almost of being critical of others, which is unfortunate. They will also convince themselves that it's because they're not willing to do what you have done why they are not successful. Let me give you a real life scenario. I joined TikTok, of course, to promote business, book, and everything else. And in posting on TikTok, I posted this video here, or a, a, like a preview of this video, which is how I earned my first million by age 25. 
-hmm. And someone in the comment actually said, it's because the white men at the company where you work like you while, while you were promoted. And I smiled and I replied, I said, you know what? Let me go along with this person because this person was trying to find an excuse for why they haven't achieved success. So I typed back and I said, actually, I was promoted to a vice president by a woman. The person went on to write, it's because you went to an Ivy League university, finding another excuse as to why they haven't achieved success. So I replied, no, I actually went to Montego Bay Community College and then Leicester, which I did distance learning. Poor people have a way, or people with a poor mindset, have a way of trying to find excuses to justify their status in life. That's exactly what this person was trying to do. If I had said yes to their comment about the white men liking me, or yes to the fact that I went to an Ivy League university, you know what this person would have done? Oh, okay, that's why she's successful. And they leave it at that. It's unfortunate, but it's real. The rich, on the other hand, they don't participate in gossip. They don't have any time for it. Where are you gonna find time to gossip when you're out there trying to achieve financial freedom? They don't allow gossip either to impact them negatively or to distract them from their goals. They only drink mint tea and green tea. They're not talking tea. And they don't have time to be on social media scrolling for hours to even think about trolling people or being critical in that forum. Another character trait of someone with a poor mindset is that they are not good at following through on their commitment. You will get the ideas, but you procrastinate. You come up with all kind of excuses as to why they won't work and you allow fear to paralyze you. You're also quick to quit if you start when you come upon obstacles. The rich, on the other hand, when they initiate their ideas, they're very focused and they're very outcome centric. They'll figure out how to borrow the money to launch that idea and they'll take chances on themselves because they believe in their true potential. They know that if they fail, there are more opportunities to succeed because failure is not the end. It's basically learning from your mistakes and trying again. Quitting is never an option for the rich unless you have explored all your options. For example, when I left my first marriage, it was time to quit. And the last character trait that many people with a poor mindset have that the rich don't is that poor people often rely on God to solve all their problems. Now, now hey, I'm heavy on the God, right? I'm not going to lie, right? So... Hey, I'm guilty of that. I rely on God to solve all my problems. I also work as if he told me he'll solve them as long as I do the work. All right, because I do also agree that faith without work is dead. So, um, hey, I'll, I'll raise my hand proudly and say out of everything she named, I do one of them, right? I rely on God to solve my problems. I also do the work, though. It's not like a magic trick, right? I also do the work, all right? So I'm actually recording this video on a Saturday. It's no telling when you'll see it, but I'm recording this video on a Saturday. I made $8,400 today in my business. Um, I made $1,200 yesterday. It was a slow day in the business, right? And uh, this is not talking about all of the businesses, this is just in one of my two businesses, right? My real estate investment company does crazy numbers, right? We will have to add that up in another video. The point that I'm making here is that if most people, right, I think we $9,700 in the last two days. So let's just call it 10 grand, right? Because we still got time in today. I'm sure some other transactions are going to go down. So let's call it just under, right? We ain't even got to round up. Just under 10 grand in the past two days on a Saturday. All right. I could be at the house with my family, chilling, 
watching TV, right? Or going out or doing whatever it is that I want to do. But uh, I'm here because what you guys don't see is in between me doing these videos for you all, the other business endeavors that I'm doing on my other screen here as well. So really having that consistency, it matters as well. So yes, I rely on God to solve my problems, but I also put the work in, all right? Six days a week, grinding, no set schedule. I'm, I come to work with goals, and we don't leave work until we check off all of our goals, right? 14 to 16 things I want to accomplish today, all right? Some days, hey, 22 plus things I want to accomplish today or else I'm not leaving. All right, that's how, that's how we rocking over here. Now, you guys know that I'm religious, so I'm not saying you should believe in God. But when we pray to God, we leave everything to God. We don't have a hand in it. You must have heard the saying that God helps those who help themselves. You have, right? If you have heard that saying, put I have in the comments. As an example, if you lose your job, what the poor will do is will pray to God to find a new job. They don't send out a resume. They don't make a phone call. They expect to manifest that job somehow and unless you're manifesting on that kind of level, it's unlikely that that job is gonna fall on your lap while you're sitting at home or sleeping away your financial freedom. Instead of relying on God to answer all your prayers with very little or no effort, the rich on the other hand, they have faith in God and they partner with God. So when you're poor and they're praying, God, Please move that piece of furniture, amen. Watch and see if it's gonna move. It's gonna stay there until you get up and move it. What you should do instead is to pray to God to give you the strength, the courage, the clarity of mind to achieve your greatest aspirations. Now my rock stars, if you're still here with me, I want you to write in the comments rich mindset and i'll know the true rock stars that are out there remember it's not an indictment we're gonna go ahead and end the video there wealth of knowledge i know this is one of my longer videos but she gave game right and sometimes we got to be alone a little bit long-winded just for the benefit of the people that just need to hear it all, right? Sometimes you need the whole thing, not a little piece of it or abbreviated version of it. So I hope you got value out of this. If you're new to this channel, hit that subscribe button, like, hit that like button next, and then share this video with anybody you think it can help, which is basically everybody, right? Everybody you know that's not a millionaire already. All right, next up, top link down description below is her channel. Be sure to go subscribe. Let her know JT sent you, right? The goal of these reactions are to expose you to other men and women to add to your virtual Rolodex. I am somebody that knows that virtual mentors work. So maybe you're not in an environment where a man or woman is around you that can actually help you get to the next level. So these videos will have to do. The good thing about that is that I've made tens of thousands of dollars just off of watching videos. And so can you. Then I took that money, invested in some other things, and then made six figures and now seven figures doing so. All right. I'm no better than you. Until next time, though, I'm a hustler. Stay hustling. JT Automations. I'm gone.